Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback review of the Sony Ericsson Walkman W302. This is a basic candy bar phone that came out in 2008, the same year as the Beijing Olympics. And despite carrying the Walkman logo, which offers pretty good multimedia and MP3 playback functionality, it's a very basic phone. There's no Wi-Fi, there's no GPS, and when it was released, it was at the bottom of uh, Walkman devices. So in 2017, you should consider this if you're looking for a very basic device, maybe as a backup emergency phone in the car, in the house, or if you're taking abroad and you want an unlocked phone. You can find it for as low as 20 bucks on Amazon and eBay, and I'll provide some links down below. It comes in two different colors. There's the uh, kind of silver version that also comes in a black version, so you can customize it. And although it was very low cost when it was first released, it still did offer a camera on the very back. It's a two megapixel sensor that produces surprisingly decent shots. You know, you would think that two megapixels is very low, especially as a multimedia phone. It's not even a smartphone, but uh, images were relatively crisp. Other specifications include a 950 milliamp hour battery, which is the standard BST33 series that Sony incorporates on most of their older devices. And there's also 20 megabytes of built-in memory, expandable via a proprietary kind of a memory stick card that Sony sold back in the day. So it's a little hard to find additional uh, you know, storage options now, but you can still find some on Amazon and eBay if you plan on taking more images or storing video content on this phone. Otherwise, it has a, a display PPI of around 186, which is obviously not as great as our modern smartphones, but images are still relatively sharp. The display also offers decent viewing angles for a non-IPS panel and remains fairly visible outdoors. In terms of weight, this is actually quite light. It comes in, uh, I would say, under 80 grams, and even though it incorporates some metal accents on the front, such as the faceplate, the rear is made out of plastic. With that being said, for a low-cost phone, it doesn't feel too cheap either. It feels rather solid and uh, nice and reassuring. In terms of the slimness, you can see it still holds up decently to modern-day smartphones, especially since it doesn't compact with uh, too many features, uh, which means that they could go with a slimmer build. In terms of the hardware, if we take a closer look, on the right hand spine there's access to a volume rocker which also tabs as a search key, and then on the side there's a dedicated key that you can tap on to take images as well as record video. This is actually a really nice feature on such a low cost phone, it's easier to launch the camera and to use it. The back features the Walkman logo, the Sony Ericsson logo, and behind the battery door, which is pretty easy to peel off, there's access to a full size SIM card slot, and also the aforementioned memory card slot. Stopping things back into place, the top features access to a lanyard strap, the side features a proprietary charger port which Sony uses, uh, which is one of the cons on this phone. Um, in, in fact, with most Walkman phones back in the day, you had to use this uh, non-standard charger that Sony uh, forced people to use. There's also a dedicated Walkman key that you can tap on to instantly launch the music player, which is uh, pretty easy to use. However, what's lacking is a standard 3.5mm headphone jack. So as a music device, we really did wish that this phone, along with many other Walkmans back in the day, came with a standard port as opposed to a proprietary Sony port where you had to plug in your own adapter just to listen to music. Otherwise, you can see that the build of the phone is actually quite elegant and beautiful. The front, again, is made out of aluminum. The screen here is made out of tempered glass. And there's also access to precision grill drilled um, speakers. After 30 seconds of inactivity, the screen times out. And you need to unlock the phone again by tapping on the star key and then unlock on the top. Afterwards, you're greeted to a animated wall uh, wallpaper that can be customized, of course. And you can see that it moves around and makes the phone seem a bit more intelligent than it really is. If we go through some of the main features, you can see there's access to your uh, network provider, battery status, reception status, and down below here are some additional time, date information, and notifications. There's also access to a main menu that you can tap on the center here to access, and when you're in the specific music playing program, you can tap on the center key again to play, pause, or skip tracks. The phone does have a haptic vibration motor, so you can set it into silent and it will still vibrate and buzz whenever you tap on a key, which is actually pretty handy. The main menu here is very standard, there's access to just these grids of features that you can access, inclusive of uh, Play Now for music services, you can access a very basic web browser, which does work, uh, granted it's not very fancy, and uh, of course you can only load up the mobile version of sites, and since this is a 2G phone, even if you pop in a 4G compatible SIM by AT&T or T-Mobile, you will still get fairly slow rendering speeds. Still, if you need to quickly look up some
some sports in terms of scores or some quick news or weather, this does still work. You can access you know, home pages, entering a, a specific address, save pages, although you're limited in terms of text entry by this uh, fairly small T9 layout uh, as opposed to a full QWERTY keyboard. Speaking of, the keyboard on here, even though I like the overall feel and the tactile response since it has this aluminum backplate, they are fairly cramped, especially since there's this large chin at the bottom with that Walkman logo next to the microphone. I do wish that the keys would have been spaced apart a little bit more, maybe pressed down, because at the moment they are fairly small and easy to accidentally trigger when you are rapidly texting or uh, typing, despite being really raised above the surface. So the keyboard is a little bit on the small side uh, for a phone that I think they could have used the surface area a little bit better on. So if we do a quick example, if we want to enter a specific address, it gives you the www already, but then you have to enter something like Google and hunt and peck. So G, uh, and then you can see that you have to tap on it a few different times to get to the correct um, letter that you would want since each key dubs as multiple features, and then wait a few seconds and then go back again. So it's a little bit tedious, but it does work. All right, so going back into the main screen here, there's also access to a few entertainment features. Um, what's nice about this phone is it supports most Java programs, so you can link it up to your computer and then sideload most Java games and apps and they will work on here. So there's a quick search for music. Uh, if I look at games, you can see there are a few sample games loaded on here. So there's a 3D roller coaster rush, which is a Java program that I installed. And you can kind of hear the speakers as well, which is decent. It's on the back. So let's skip this. And then you can see kind of the level of graphics that this phone is able to handle. Not too much in terms of a slowdown of frame rates, but this is a very simple app. Um, still, it uh, you know, shows that the phone isn't half bad if you do need to load some quick games up and you want to uh, play them back. Uh, it is able to handle those with, uh, without too many problems. So let's exit out of this. And then again, other games can be downloaded also through the Sony Ericsson store if you want to access that directly using the browser. There's also a sound recorder on here, which uh, you know you should use a memory card to really uh, record longer files, but it does work, and we can talk a little bit more about the microphone next. So as far as the call quality and the mic, it does work actually surprisingly nicely. It's not a noise-canceling microphone, but even if you're in outdoor environments, it still picks up your voice uh, without any issues. And so as long as you have a decent reception, which in the Seattle region I didn't have any problems using with T-Mobile, um, it actually sounds quite nice. So in terms of call and call performance, I had no real issues with. So the mic is actually decent, and uh, as far as doing some quick voice memos, you won't be you know, too disappointed with that uh, regard. Track ID, video player, all very basic features. If you want to quickly look up a song, you can do that using the microphone. There's also Walkman services, so if you tap on this, it launches up the Walkman MP3 player. This is the format. If you have a cover art, it would have been so, um, popped onto this little square here, so it does offer support for that, and it gives you some basic track information, and then you can play, the, play them back, of course, pause your music, as well as change the volume controls on the sides. So it's pretty well thought out and easy to use as a music player, although, again, headphones are a little bit restricted. Messaging, pretty standard. We can take a look at the camera, which is also, again, launchable using the side key. And you can see the interface here is very simple. You have access just to your resolution, capped at two megapixels, number of images you've taken, as well as settings if you are recording video or taking images. And then you can tap on more advanced settings, such as a burst mode. There's also the ability to turn on night mode, self timers, picture quality, save to, and of course the shutter sound. So I'll, there's also a few different filters that you can apply and play with directly on the camera. So for such a basic device, uh, again, Sony actually did a pretty good job with the interface. All right, so let's take a quick look by tapping and uh, creating a shot, let's say of just this back plate. You can see that the image takes uh, you know, within just uh, you know five seconds or less, so it's not too slow either. In terms of options, I can blog this, I can also fix it, add an effect, or delete it. And if I go back, I can also take a look at all my images by tapping on the multimedia key. And from here, I'm able to cycle through the images I've taken and give you guys a better idea of what the camera can perform under good lighting environments. You can see it actually does a respectable job. Colors are pretty accurate, and if you load them up using a computer, they do tend to turn out a little bit better as well. So 
not too shabby at all for a relatively low megapixel count. So again, proving that megapixels aren't everything. There's also a dedicated FM radio on here that performs nicely, although you do need to have a headset plugged in to act as the antenna for it to work. Contacts, very basic file manager that you can cycle through. There are a few sample images. And again, there are a few uh, animated ones as well if you want to use it as a potential wallpaper. Alright, so let's go back, and uh, in terms of ringtone, Sony also gives you quite a few preloaded options. Um, again, videos can be played back, but you do, you do have to kind of decrease the resolution for them to be played on a relatively small screen, although it can be rotated horizontally for a slightly enhanced experience. Basic settings, basic organizer functions, which include things like a timer, a stopwatch, a calculator, which are all very simple. Um, the other things that you can run on here include a few other Java-based apps like a world clock, which I installed using Java, and you can see that it loads it up and again uses some more fancier animations for uh, navigating around this virtual globe in kind of a Google Maps inspired view and actually is uh, pretty interesting. So I can visit a specific place and then take a look at the time zone and some basic details about how far it is in terms of distance. So you know there's quite a few things that you can run on this despite it not being a fully fledged smartphone and uh, lacking a touchscreen as well as Wi-Fi. But you know it works for those basic tasks. Again some basic things like flight mode, security, setting a passcode, all those things can be accessed using the settings drawer that you see here. Connectivity in terms of Bluetooth, you know, I can turn this on and, uh, you know, allows me to connect to a wireless headset for playing back music uh, in addition to, you know, syncing and sending information like images wirelessly without using USB. So, so that's been the Sony Ericsson W302 Walkman. It's actually a surprisingly uh, functional mini uh, backup phone here in 2017. It's not bad at all, and if you're looking for an extremely budget device and you don't want to look at a fully fledged smartphone, this is not a poor choice, especially for a low price point that you can pick it up for. As far as playing back music is concerned, it does have fairly strong Kodak support since it is a Walkman, but it's limited by the lack of a standard 3.5mm headphone jack. Images were uh, better than I expected, and reception and call quality are also excellent. When it comes to battery life, I got roughly two and a half days of use before I needed to recharge it with sporadic use in between. Standby mode is also quite long, as expected for a non-smartphone device. So all in all, pretty good build quality and uh, a very small and lightweight device. If you're looking for a backup emergency phone, not a bad choice at all. You can learn more details about this in our retro throwback article, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.